on decoding the secrets of great influencer marketing and a discussion we've I'm sure all been waiting for. Please uh, welcome our panelists, some of India's most loved influencers and leaders. We're now going to be joined by Sanjay Mehta, joint CEO Miram India, Nikunj Lotia BU, Nick, uh, content creator, influencer. We've got Dhruv Chitko Pekar, the co founder and CEO of Big Bang Social and co founder Collective Artist Network. We've got Sejal Kumar, who's a content creator, Saranj Koela, chef, influencer. We've got Arthur Altonian, Senior Client Development Director, APAC Inca, and lastly, our session chair, Ajay Gupte, CEO of Wavemaker. So ladies and gentlemen, with this, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and taking out your valuable time. Great smiles. We've always seen you on the other side creating content, and this is the time when you'll be speaking about the same, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, Ajay, it's going to be a great uh, conversation ahead. I'd love you to uh, take forth the live beaten now to take it with your panel. Over to you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bhavna. Good evening to the panelists. Hi, how are you? I hope you're all well. Good yeah. Evening. Hi. Yeah, hi. 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 Good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope, I hope you're all having a very good Friday evening and a warm welcome to you all. Uh, to our panel discussion, where we'll find out more about the secrets behind great influencer marketing. Globally, influencer marketing is a $14 billion industry, growing at more than 31% uh, per annum. Uh, in India too, uh, we are already a 900 crore uh, rupee industry and growing at more than 25% annually. With more than 40 crore Indians on social media, and each one following at least one influencer, we know that the influence of influencer marketing is only going to grow. We have with us on the panel today, uh, experts who represent various parts of this growing industry, who are in a great position to help us unravel the ingredients of a successful marketing campaign in the influencer space. So welcome everyone, uh, and and I'd like to get into it right away. My first my first question goes to Nikunj. Nick, oh. with your uh, with your BU Nick, uh, which which has what a million seven million followers uh, across across all five platforms, yeah, around ten million uh, followers. Gosh, seven million followers, and I believe two billion video views. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's great. <laughs> I'm still surprised. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, you you got here with seven million followers and 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 these number of video views. It it would have been a, a real long journey, and and you know there would have been a lot of learning and a lot of things that you would have built along the way. But tell us a little bit about how how you came to where you are today, and and how a little bit about how the journey was. I mean, uh, be unique. The entire crew just we just turned seven uh, mm -hmm. like this month. On uh, like last month, on August 26th, we just turned seven. And uh, it has been an amazing journey uh, because I remember back when we started, it was like seven years ago. Um, and it's actually 10 years ago because I had a channel before this called uh, Not So Funny. And uh, it turned out to be exactly how the name was. Uh, not at all funny. So, uh, so yeah, it's been like almost about like 10 years journey. And uh, we started uh, creating videos on YouTube first. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started creating YouTube videos on YouTube and uh, the only thing on YouTube was probably like a trailer or like a movie song or something like that. So uh, we didn't realize that it's going to be this big. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been amazing now. Now I see a lot of people doing it. Uh, back then we didn't realize that, you know, we can make a career out of it. Uh, I still remember we were the first ones. YouTube used to send us to this uh, touch panels with brands and we used to, it, it, it used to be called as uh, speed dating with brands where we used to make the brands understand that how, you know, you should get on digital and not, you know, uh, we, we don't used to make them understand why you should work with me. We used to try to get them on digital by comparing their, you know, the amount of money that they're spending, say on a college fest to the amount of people who are coming on a college fest to the amount of people who are watching our videos. So it's been a, a beautiful journey. Uh, we've made, we've worked with like, probably hundreds of brands by now and uh, it's fun and I'm still exploring. I'm still, we recently uh, did a web series with, uh, with a brand called Upgrad 
and uh, yeah i mean it's fun i'm enjoying every bit of it super i mean you you been part of it right from the beginning i guess then yeah you know, getting getting things together and i think where we are today uh, the efforts that you guys have put in right in the beginning have gone a long way in in bringing us here lovely nick uh, say the like come to you next you you are a, a a really successful fashion and lifestyle influencer um, you know and and again a massive number of followers i believe there are a million million plus uh, followers in the lifestyle and fashion space who follow you and have again what 200 million odd videos of yours so uh, <laughs> how how has it been for you how has the journey been for you it's been really great on uh... Nick and I pretty much started at the same time. We used to be part of this event called YouTube Next Up, mm-hmm. where we learned how to produce videos together, and we were on the same team, uh, learning how to edit and just storyboard and stuff like that. And I've also gone through pretty much every phase of like pitching, doing like a brand deck for brands to sort of like put money in my videos, mm-hmm. um, to being in a space where. it's great to have the freedom to say no to certain projects and say yes to the ones that truly excite me which is amazing um i love the fact that as i've grown i've sort of expanded from doing uh, really low budget fashion styling videos to now uh, getting into other things that are my passions which are acting i just m- the second season of my web series just came out on z5 and also music been producing my own songs as well i love the autonomy that comes with the internet and it's awesome to be an artist along with producer and obviously business person as well um and it's great i love it um it's great to sort of like build this universe around you which you can do whatever you want with it so it's awesome i'm having a really good time awesome that that really sounds sounds fun and and i and i completely yeah. understand when you say you know the freedom to do what you want and and the the ability to play by your rules that must be really really liberating yeah wonderful wonderful and 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 great to see you know to see where you are today in the position that you are uh, and uh, creating so much influence around you fantastic thank you great thank work. you our next panelist is saransh saransh uh, you are a celebrity chef <laughs> and an influencer chef and you have a butter chicken i believe that is is named after you i mean what what more this is like this is state of this is, this is what legend is made of you know to have to have a butter chicken actually to be uh, named after you incredible you've also been on the master chef australia as a as a uh, guest judge now uh, that's an incredible uh, incredible journey tell us about a little bit about how it has been I think uh, first of all it's very kind of you uh, because butter chicken is I think India's uh, sort of one of our national dishes so I think <laughs> to even I have a small have part of it, countries <laughs> <laughs> uh, to have a small part of it connected to me makes mm-hmm. me really really proud and happy of course I think a lot of this um, actually is is courtesy social media and the digital platforms that exist um, the, the brand that I run uh, is called Goila Butter Chicken and goila is my last name and and that's how butter chicken is connected to me but uh, it was a hashtag on twitter and on uh, instagram and on facebook actually at that time instagram was still like before instagram was like the cool spot to be i think that's the hashtag was on before that and um, is that hashtag that really blew up for me and i realized that bombay didn't have a great butter chicken like delhi and i think uh, found some <coughs> great friends and um, people who supported uh, my style of cooking and our food but i think um, what has been really interesting for me as a chef is that um, there is a whole world of creation uh, that exists for food creators online and i think that's the route that i chose to um, to grow as a chef and um, it's been very interesting to be able to blend a offline business with an online community and and i've i've been able to learn a lot in the last 6 7 years uh, you know uh, guys like nikunj and sejal all the, i have been following them for as many years probably as they have been running their channels as well and uh, um there is a lot to learn from each creator's universe which means that uh, um whatever applies to fashion can also probably apply to food 
um, um, and and we use those tools and we use um, that universe of creation to promote our restaurants, to promote recipes, uh, to build myself as a chef. And I think um, uh, to say that chefs only belong in the kitchen now would be a lie. I think they truly are artists online and offline. No, yeah, absolutely, and and I think uh, this whole pandemic has made all of us into. Yeah. Aspiring every home now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of competition. So they are that. <laughs> and, and and you know everyone has a good camera and a good video and everyone is going for it. Uh, it is it is quite quite amazing. But but I I tell you, uh, butter chicken to me is really legend stuff. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. Oh, we will we will make sure you try the try our butter chicken. Then. Look forward. Look forward. Great. I, I now move to uh, Sanjay. Sanjay, uh, since since you are in the space of you know working with influencers and working with brands, trying to make you know uh, influencers helping influencers deliver the best for brands and helping brands maximize the benefit that they can derive uh, using influencers. Now, it's it's a different world. I mean, that's that's the truth. Uh, and uh, you know, like like uh, uh, Sejal was talking about autonomy, and you know how they like to work uh, on their own, and and brands have the other side of it where there are a lot of rules and a lot of things to be followed. Uh, it must be challenging to bring uh, the two together. Uh, how do you manage it, and how do you, uh, you know, bring the two worlds together to deliver uh, maximum impact for the brands? Yeah, um, thanks. Um, so. I think it's been an interesting journey for us as an agency also uh, working on the influencer marketing uh, you know segment because it's been a learning for everyone uh, I think the, the space has evolved uh, from the time when influencers were used uh, from a very pure technical purpose you know you you want to get a hashtag trending on a day or you know something of that kind so from those very very small trivial goals what what today look trivial to reaching a point where you know a, a specific influencer campaign can actually make a huge impact for the brand in terms of either launching a product or you know creating sales or opportunities etc so it's been a fascinating journey and it started out of course by you know kind of educating brands about what what was an influencer engagement like the closest that they could uh, connect was, you know, the brand ambassador space, and which was which was similar but yet very different because it it you know kind of engaged uh, celebrities of a different level, and you know maybe there was limited engagement, uh, specific uh, number of hours or days in a year or something like that versus an influencer engagement which which had a a different uh, kind of a structure to the engagement itself, so. Going starting from there and, and engaging uh, both sides, you know, even from an influencer side, uh, you know, some like some of them on this panel were obviously very mature and very successful here. But you know, over, the, over time, we work with various levels of influencers, and uh, to also have them appreciate that when you are, uh, you know, putting out content on behalf of a brand, uh, there there is so much of. A, a brand equity associated with anything that we do. And if a brand requires certain do's and don'ts, they need to be appreciated because there is so much riding on, on that brand. So finding that right balance, explaining the concept of working with influencers to the brand at the same time, uh, you know, engaging with the influencers to uh, appreciate uh, why a brand will have some restrictions, some constraints, uh, considering where they come from. A lot of them are MNCs and have a whole lot of constraints. Uh, there are brands with regulatory issues, whether it's in BFSI or in healthcare. You know, for various reasons, there are constraints which are applicable and one needs to find the right balance. And it's been an interesting journey. I think today, if we see, you know, it's, it's evolved a lot. I think both sides, uh, the brand managers, as well as influencers have a much better understanding. It's got easier over time because both have understood where where this needs to go but it's been an interesting journey pretty much like you know not as exciting as the journey of these influencers but also for us equally as exciting journey for learning and 
you know, getting brands and influencers working together uh, on very interesting projects. Yeah, and you know, I think uh, in the last uh, one year, COVID has really, uh, uh, you know, like there is a silver lining for every cloud. Uh, the, the influencer space has, you know, marketers have really learned the benefits of getting into the space and uh, have managed to work a lot better. Uh, and I made the effort to understand, you know, what are the what are the nuances and and what you know how how do we make this work? Because it isn't as uh, straightforward as as creating a campaign where everything is under your control. Right. Um, and and like you said, it's it's not only the the lead influences like like these three stars we have here, but it's a it's a long tail which follows. And and uh, you know to understand that things things will be a little bit. Off, I think, is another uh, great adjustment right. that needs to be made, and and bringing it together is is, is quite a task. Right. Nick, you have any um, any any good stories of of how uh, you know how how things uh, came together extremely well on any brand? Uh, you're on mute, Nick. Nick, you're on mute. Or something wrong with you? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm still getting used to this now. Sorry. See, yeah. <laughs> we also like you guys, man. Like it's uh, if you think that we know everything, uh, but like this is, this no. is this is me. Yeah, this has to happen once in every in every <laughs> meeting or every call. It's only us. I mean, I still I I still love when these panels used to be uh, live because then I can complain saying that I come from Dombivli. That's why I'm late. That's why I'm, you know, but I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there are uh, quite a lot of stories. Uh, there are quite a lot of brands that we, you know, uh, back in the day, we used to promote this brand called Beardo, uh, which was very relatively very new brand when it came out. And I was very new uh, mm -hmm. to, like, I remember I hardly had, like, not even, like, a 100,000 uh, followers back then. And then it's fun that I saw them grow and they saw me grow and we kind of did it together. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it turned out to be like really well for them. I know the owners personally and they've moved out now. Obviously, they've got cast in and like they've left. And uh, I always like, I, I feel proud about getting the whole beard culture in India back then when though, you know, it was not a thing. Growing a beard was not a thing. So I uh, kind of would say, say, you can say I kind of 5% impacted the whole culture of getting beard in India because that brand was paying me well. And uh, off lately, we are doing this uh, web series with Upgrad, which is going like really well. And uh, uh, yeah, I spoken, uh, I spoken about this to Guru that I, uh, you know, generally I was not into bigger content because I feel that it's easier for me to make short content, make it today, get my money, and then leave. Mm -hmm. But and I thought that making bigger content is takes a lot of time. I've asked a lot of people around. I've lost a lot of producers around that. You know, they say that it takes probably around six months to write, four months to produce. And uh, then when I wanted to do it, when I got into it, when I got into the roots of it, that's when I realized that we've been doing all, all this for so long that we forgot that we are, con we are asking someone who's doing it differently. Like we are asking someone from a film background. So I realized the first, uh, first season of the series that we wrote from ideation to filming to, for the, for, to the first episode to come out, it took, it took us like nine days. So now, now I'm so much into now. Now I'm so much involved into making bigger content, and it's been amazing. To, like we are still new our last last episode of the season. I'm super excited about it. It's been fun. Uh, I love creating branded content. If you watch my videos closely, you will understand. Like eight out of my ten video, eight out of ten of my videos are branded, because I have this theory uh, when I write is that if I write, uh, I write all my stuff. So if I write a video for a brand, what I do is I write a video for a brand. Then I take out the brand from the video and I look at the script and I ask myself, uh, would I post this video without the brand involved in it? If the answer is yes, only then I add the brand in it. And that's why it looks very authentic. It looks very unique. And that's why I don't get a lot of comments saying that I really have sold out that you're only doing branded stuff. I truly enjoy the process. I think that, that's an amazing way to look at it really. And, uh... No, no wonder, no wonder brands are brands are enjoying working along with you, because uh, a, a force fit in my mind is actually um, as as negative as, as possibly not using, uh, you know, and not not doing the kind of work that that we want to do. So, so that that's that's absolutely great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Dhruv, you are on the on the panel on the ASCII panel. 
and the last last discussion was was all about uh, you know how the ASCII guidelines have have been. Uh, I know that you know th there was a lot of flutter when the guidelines came into place, uh, and um, people were concerned of how things would get impacted. Uh, but I think things are settling down now. Uh, from from your perspective, tell us a little bit more. You know about about how, what the guidelines are like and you know, how it's going to impact and, and what is the big picture in terms of how we see benefit uh, from it coming through? Uh, first of all, thanks, Ajay. Uh, great to be here and great to be with everybody uh, on this panel. Uh, I feel a bit burdened that we're going away from Nick and Saranch and Sejal's uh, beautiful, fun content stories to something as unsexy as unregulation and terms and things we have to do on ASCII. But um, the truth is, Ajay, that I, I got onto the ASCII board and I was very honest uh, on the task force, I should say, and I was very honest with the entire task force team that I'm only coming because I'm, I'm very honestly coming in as a spy. I wanted to ensure that someone, I've been, I've been in the business of talent for pretty much my entire adult life. Uh, I spent 15 years working with the best of talent and now some of them are here on the screen, uh, which is an incredible opportunity. Um, and uh, my biggest learning on talent is that you got to let them fly and you have to keep them unencumbered. And the truth is that um, uh, having said that, um, on ASCII specifically, and I'll keep it really brief because uh, I think people are aware of the guidelines, uh, people are aware of the benefits, but I think fundamentally and the most exciting aspect of it is that um, any industry which reaches a certain size and scale um, requires a certain level of frameworks, requires a certain level of, of sort of guardrails um, simply because the scale of the opportunity and simply because the scale of the, um, of the reach that it has um, uh, needs to ensure that everyone who's entering in new into the industry uh, knows that it's formalized, know that it's organized, um, and brands, uh, publishers, media, uh, senior folks who are on this panel, and of course the creators themselves uh, have some sort of framework with which to interact with one another. And the first step to that was um, being completely transparent about disclosure, because that's the one space which uh, is the starting point of any engagement with an influencer, right? Do you know what you're getting into? Um, and, and that's where it's at. I think that, um, and, I, and I got about five minutes of the previous panel and um, Manisha, myself, um, we, we spent about six months with a, with a pretty large uh, group um, putting it together. It's really just phase one. I think the future is going to mean a lot more um, tools, a lot more insights, a lot more, um, uh, I, I would also say protection, right? Because um, our background and my background is that I've worked with celebrities, um, traditional celebrities, so to speak, and the new age celebrity is what you're seeing on the screen with, with you right now. So a lot of that entire um, consumer protection code, celebrity protection code, all of that is going to come into uh, the content ecosystem as we see it. Uh, and that's really uh, where it's at. And I think, uh, like you rightly said, it's early days. It's starting to, the initial stress, I think, on influencers is starting to flutter down. Uh, brands are starting to understand their guardrails. Um, and it's just now about more and more execution adoption. And what we have in mind, and I'll just share this, is that um, we're going to make this something that the industry is going to want to celebrate. Uh, just like you have the Khans, just like you have the Emmys, just like you have the FEs where you celebrate great advertising and great content. Um, we're going to put ourselves in a position where we're going to celebrate great branded content. Um, uh, Nick gave a couple of examples of the stuff that he's done. It's why he's so loved. Uh, the other content creators here, very similarly so. Um, so I think once we start creating uh, industry-wide benchmarks about it and celebrating it and acknowledging it, um, I think there will be a pursuit from both brands and, and content creators to, to want to um, uh, collaborate in that fashion. And that's where we're going. Super. So, by, you know, you're, you're so right. It's, it's now a 900 crore industry, like you just said. It's supposed to go to 2,200 crores in the next couple of years. Uh, we are not, we're not talking small numbers anymore. Uh, and I think the, the only way to make sure that uh, you know, it, it, it goes well is, is to set up the, the frameworks today uh, and, and ensure that you know, there, is, there is a sanity to how things are moving. Uh, Sanjay, just on, on this, a quick one. Uh, how, have, how have brands been reacting to, to the guidelines uh, in general you know, from your perspective? So uh, in our case, at least most of the brands that we work with our, uh, you know, reasonably large uh, corporates, and they have had uh, they from the regulatory, I mean, rather com governance point of view, they have been transparent when they have been using, uh, you know, uh, influencer marketing. So, 
uh, even before the guidelines came, there was a certain, you know, sort of voluntary disclosure uh, of sorts when they were working with uh, with influencers. It was not portrayed as, uh, you know, being on content. Um, so I think those those have been easy transitions uh, thereafter. Um, I, I think for, for, for at least the kind of brands that we work with, we didn't see any challenge uh, in getting them to agree, you know, to now, you know, specific standards which have now come in place. Okay, that, that, that's great. Uh, Sejal, just I mean, from, from your perspective as an, in, as an influencer, I know these are early days, but how have you seen uh, how these guidelines come into play for, for you guys and, and how have you been able to adapt to it? Um, any, any insight for, for the rest of us? Well, uh, to be honest, I'm still... Um, sorry, there's some noise at the back. <laughs> there's always cooking going on in my kitchen. <laughs> uh, it's good. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, to be honest, I'm still yet to like work in a situation where I'm asked to abide to these guidelines specifically. So I don't think I have a specific answer to that. But I'm very happy that uh, things like this are coming into play because like Thrup said, it's very important. And I've been working in this space for six years now. And we've, I've been in a space where I've had to where I've been scared that I won't get paid, even till today, like um, there's some opportunities that come and go and the payments come in very late. And that's something that as a working professional, I shouldn't be scared of. But I'm happy that stuff like this is coming into play, that that's not a dictating factor on how I should be working. That should just be a given, right? Uh, basic conduct, basic professionalism. And, and I think you guys are right, as the industry grows, there's no space to have those kind of situations where people are just, um, you know, taken advantage of in a way. Uh, it gets better as you grow uh, because you have, you know, a certain set of people around you who can help you uh, get a better bargaining power. Uh, but I'm happy it's transparent for our audience as well and also for us. So I'm hoping that these issues get solved as we go ahead. Great, great. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad, you know, I, I completely understand the, uncertainties uh, involved and and you know just just getting some frameworks in place um, really really um, really help everyone and um, if you're going through this i can well imagine what's happening to the to the long tail yeah so, uh, actually sorry there's a, another thing i feel is important to add a lot of people in the industry who are entering now are also very young i started out when i was 19 and as a 19 year old luckily i studied economics so I sort of was like, you know, pretty straight with like how I would like to get paid and not settle. But a lot of people that I've seen are just kids who just want to make it big, you know? So they need a specific sort of protection from anything that can go wrong. Great, great. And fascinating that that you guys jumped into to, to this uh, at such a young age and, and have made, uh, made it a success. Uh, really hats off, hats off to you. Arthur, finally coming to you. <laughs> you are, you are, uh, you are the the hero behind the scenes of of Inca, <laughs> which is the hero of the day today, with <laughs> with all Thank the um, with all the, the the you know the information that has that has come in and been put together. I think painstakingly. Um, you know, uh, it's it's great that. Uh, we have this uh, forum. We, it's great that we're putting information together. I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of marketers that I work with, uh, I know, are very, very, uh, are looking forward to this space very keenly. Um, like I said, you know, in the last one year, um, uh, this this space has seen the kind of traction that you know I guess wasn't seen over the last five, ten years, and, and this really has been has received a massive impetus. Uh, and, and, and marketers are really looking forward to this kind of information. So thanks for that. And, and uh, uh, well, <laughs> for all the credit I have to say goes to our marketing teams and the Inca India teams who have been um, the, the key persons making this happen. So not so me from a, from a regional perspective, a very little contribution, but all the credit goes to the marketing and Inca India team. <laughs> Arthur, as a, as a part of the APAC, uh, community, you know, you you've got a lot of experience across across markets. Uh, in in your mind, uh, what what are the right ingredients uh, that uh, that need to go in to to make 
uh, influencer marketing uh, you know really work for brands uh, uh, i think i've heard so many things uh, today that resonate uh, with all the clients that we work with across the region in apac but um, which is my remit today, but I also came from Western Europe where, you know, we're talking about regulation, we're talking about uh, some of the challenge that uh, Sejal just raised about, you know, the uncertainty. All that is pretty much similar everywhere. And uh, regulation is definitely something that are expected by brands, are expected by creators. And, you know, as you said earlier, as the industry grows, we need to make sure that uh, someone is looking after everyone uh, and those regulation evolved. And often, when we work with regional or global brands activating in multiple markets, they need some consistency across all markets. And that's definitely something that we'll look at. Um, to, make, to answer your question about um, you know, how we can make campaigns successful, there is a bespoke recipe for India where obviously uh, the way you guys engage, the type of content you create. And I've had a fortunate to look at a bit of what Nick was creating, was uh, Saranj was creating and Sejal as well. And it's, it, it's very passionate and it's very authentic the way you guys engage. And, and I'm quite lucky to have been exposed to so many great content as well across the region. And so, so the recipe, of course, is to work with creators who have the passion and who have the authenticity, uh, the way they work and the way they uh, create content. And of course, you know, this industry is growing. There are millions and millions of creators available and every day you have new creators. And one of the main requests from the brands is help us to find the right ones. And right might mean many things. For some of them, it will be, you know, I need reach. Uh, but often what we hear is I need someone who will be able to deliver the reach. But most importantly, I need the, the authenticity and the expertise. So when we want to talk and deliver an advocacy, for example, we look at expertise. And what I mean by expertise is not someone who has just received the product, has read the manual, and hey, he's creating a product. Is someone who has been over time built an audience about that specific category, about that specific services. And that's something that is definitely a key ingredient for success. So when we work on identifying the right influencers, the first thing we do is let's not just look at the face value of the influencers. Let's go deep into the data about who are the followers, where are they based, what's the level of engagement. And when I talk about level of engagement is we look at engagement rate and those vanity metrics that we can easily find on platforms, but also we go through pieces of content. Is the influencers taking time to engage and answers the question, engaging with their uh, consumers? So that's definitely something. Is the influencers talking about the product or the service from a personal way. And I think Nick was talking about that example he gave about, you know, he will take the name of the brand out and he will say, is this really me? Or is it something that you can just put any other brands and it could work? So, you know, brands wants to work with influencers that are real, authentic, and not mercenaries who will take any brands and any collaboration. And I think Sejal, you were saying that you have now the luxury of saying no to some project if you don't feel that, it's not you. Uh, and I think that's what brands need. And more and more, that's what consumers as well are looking for. You know, this industry is growing. It's no longer something silo. It's no longer something that people are just easily influenced. The regulation are coming in to make sure that no one is deceived in this space. And what people will value is the expertise and, you know, the, the authenticity. There are a couple of brands that I've seen uh, which resonate to people about, you know, how they're talking about in a fun environment or entertaining environment. And we've seen that a lot over the last two years where people were stuck at home. You know, they needed something to escape. And we have so many great examples. But another thing that a very successful campaign that I've seen uh, was, you know, when we talk about pharmaceuticals, often you would say, well, it's not a sexy product, you know, not talking about the specific uh, medicine or drugs. Uh, but however, that brand managed to work with some niche influencers who were specialized in, uh, you know, sports. I'm into rock climbing. So I was kind of like following those influencers. And that specific influencers not only was talking about their passion, which was the rock climbing, but 
she was also talking about uh, the birth control. So basically she was collaborating with that pharmaceutical company about how this company was providing guidance, providing information. Uh, and so it was done in a very subtle way as opposed to a very hard sell way. And I think for a successful campaign, uh, why people and consumers are moving away from traditional display and video ads that we will see everywhere. And we know that the engagement, the clicks is very low to content created by the influencers is mainly because they are looking for something very authentic. And the influencers, I'm confident, more and more will replace the standard uh, brand assets that we see. I'm not saying that the creative agencies have no future. They definitely have, but in a different aspect. And more and more brands are using the content created by the influencers, not only on social media, but are using them on their own, so on their own social channels, on their own website, and on their, we've seen that on out of home, we've seen on connected TVs. They're using the content and the creativity that the influencers are using. And I think to summarize, if we can stick to the passion, the authenticity and being real, I think that's, 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 those are definitely a success for any brands, regardless of the verticals. Great, that, I think that, that, that's so valuable really. And uh, looking at uh, Saran's uh, schedule and uh, Nick, we know that, you know, we can see that what they've tried to do is, is stick to that, the whole thing of being original and, and being real to the, to their cause and, and therefore working a lot better with, with brands. Uh, great, thanks, thanks. Dhruv, you work with a whole lot of uh, influencers, right? Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you make sure that, uh, you know, uh, you are able to select the right kind of, bring the right kind of influencer and brand together? Uh, and also, how do you, uh, do you need to actually support the, the, uh, the long tail of influencers, the relatively newer ones of, of not very large size who, who are still getting there. And how do you support them and how do you make sure that you have the right fit between uh, the influencer and the brand? Well, that's the secret sauce. Uh, uh, but in a nutshell, right, I think that um, I'll start with just saying that the biggest danger to the industry, uh, Ajay, is the, is the commoditization of, of this incredible talent, right? Because it is talent that um, is available to interact with at scale. Um, the, the reason why we started Big Bang Social um, out of our traditional celebrity representation business was that we very strongly believe that the, that the journey, the grooming, the opportunity for them should be not unlike anybody who is, well, to put it very simply, operating at a different scale. The fact is talent is talent. It's just the way they're consumed is at different operating scales, right? So I'll start by saying that... Um, the most important thing is, and I, and I think um, Arthur spoke about it quite well, is, is to find uh, and is to, is to really understand um, content creators for who they are as personalities, right? Really understand who they are as people and not reduce them to commoditizations like numbers and reach and engagement and, and likes and followers and bookmarks and Falana Dimkana, whatever, you know, the, the algorithms will get thrown at us because they're not commodities, they're human beings who have tremendous talent and are building media assets that are larger than most media assets in the world today. So, and, and they're doing it alone. Uh, some of them, like the people on this call are, are privileged and have grown to a point where they have teams around them, but they all started when they were individuals, you know, working two jobs. And I know a bunch of their backgrounds, so I won't get into the details, but you know, they were hustling three, three jobs at the same time and finding a way to make this happen. So they've grown to a point where the scale of their operation requires teams, but First and foremost, they were human beings with great stories to tell. So I think that fundamentally should not change. When we at Big Bang Social approach um, content creators and look for collaborations, I think the idea is um, uh, how do you get to the depth of what that individual is about and how do you then find a way to marry that with what brands require? Now, whilst that's the great philosophical thought, it doesn't always execute because influencer marketing and KOL marketing and whatever the terms are, is a very high speed, high volume kind of engagement currently. What's going to happen, which I think is going to marry very beautifully uh, to what's already happening in other parts of the world is that the for a certain section of the content creators, the levels of engagement are going to go deeper. You're going to find that content creators will work with a smaller group of brands, but will have longer engagements with them because the brands will understand that this is not a one-off, but this will become more of an 
ambassadorial co-creation co-development kind of association it's what you know you, if you speak to sejal and you speak to saranj now you speak to nick these guys are actually starting their own businesses i can't let the cat out of the bag but they're entrepreneurs as well starting their own businesses or already have businesses right um, so you're going to find many of those journeys also taking place to your answer on the long tail i think the um, the role that organizations like mine have to play is to one um, help them truly understand uh, what their individual journeys could be uh, there is a danger and i think sejal put it very beautifully that there are very young people who are hitting big time revenue and big time monies before they've completed education and the fact is whilst they may deserve it um, there is a certain level of maturity that comes with having that kind of revenue income coming into your pockets without having the uh, the people around you to advise you appropriately right so i think that there is a a, a psychological a financial um, a sort of grooming and mentoring that organizations like mine have to play with their ecosystems uh, to make sure that they have that in place and while i said right in the start you have to let their talent flow right and i think that's the balance really that uh, is very very critical i don't want to sound like a pandit i am not uh, this this space is moving so fast we are seeing new things every day um, so i am really just enjoying the ride telling my team to keep their eyes and ears open and i think the most important thing is that all of us have to keep our ears very close to the ground if i don't speak to nick once a week every week uh, i know that i'm missing out on the real action of what's happening in this country and i'm on the wrong side of the age factor there right uh, so it's just very important to keep that keep that uh, knowledge with yourself and keep that humility um, and and i think it will it will it will work very synergistically this is this is this is so exciting actually because you know you've got young talent really showcasing what what they can do um, the level of maturity is astounding really um, you know to to understand that i have this talent i can you know monetize it i can i can create value from it uh, and to actually uh, put it down and make it happen at at the young age so you said you were 19 when you started it um i i i don't think i i thought about anything beyond college at that point of time but but it's inspiring really uh, really inspiring to to think that you know you guys started off you know, so early and 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 have have made so much out of it and and you're saying there are people who are younger um, it's an incredible incredible story i think we're coming to our end i have uh, one last question for for everyone around the table uh, i would i would like to know about you know the the campaign or or, or the piece of work that you believe uh, really is gold standard and and that uh you know you you have been part of or you've seen and and you wish you were part of so saran shai i'd start with you yeah what 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 do you see as as a piece of work that really packs it um okay so i i would really say it because uh, recently it's been it's been on the top of my mind i think uh, um this money heist campaign that netflix did uh, recently um it happens to uh, my my girlfriend uh, you uh, happens to have curated that campaign and there is a direct connection that i have with it but i think it's um a beautiful beautiful way of uh, promoting um something so organically and and and, uh, and and something that everybody wants to be a part of and um, in fact today i uploaded a uh, a recipe cooking in a money heist jumpsuit so um a spanish <laughs> recipe just to because i i i felt so connected to the show and and to that campaign so i think it was very very beautifully done on a personal front um i had worked with agoda um this year and again um they fit in so beautifully into my travel and food journey um as a as a brand who told me that go and go and eat your heart out in kolkata and just uh show us the city from your lens and i the fact that they gave me creative control and narrative over showing people kolkata from my eyes as a chef uh, really really um i think it's the best travel piece i've ever created in my life and i could not believe that it was sponsored um so you know i have i've always thought that you know what i will save some money travel take a videographer with me and make this beautiful looking video that i want to i was amazed that a brand believed in that so uh, very very excited as to how the brands are now open opening to to creating authentic content or content that syncs with you on a personal level so um very interesting uh, the fact that my mom messaged me saying that i want to go to kolkata the next time you go 
I was like, "Hey, <laughs> mom also watches." <laughs> so that was fun. Amazing. I I could I could you know I could feel the passion and the love you had uh, for the for the brand when you worked on it. That I think that came from the freedom that that you were given. Uh, it made a massive difference and and really something for for all of us to learn. Nick, tell us about your favorite uh, campaign. Uh, personally, for me, it's the the one that I'm making right now. Upgrade is trending all over India. We've done like uh, it's like a lot of hard work went behind it. Like the team of hundred people who were working, we shot the whole series in three days, and we invested in it. That's why personally, it's the same. And uh, you, because the last season also won a YouTube Works Award, so we wanted this one to be like a. Uh, to be honest, I've not I've made like zero money out of it. I've just put everything. in it so that it comes out really well and apart from that i really like uh, uh, the recent uh, shahrukh khan hotstar collaboration ads that uh, probably tanmay tanmay's company is doing i guess i really like uh, those ads i think it's quite creative like i really uh, admire tanmay on a lot of his uh, work with cred too and um, like i aspire to do something like this nice 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 sejal you Uh, well, I follow a lot of uh, artists, and one artist. This is not a brand campaign, but I love how she's done her overall um, album. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo, her new album really inspired me. Like Saran shared, it doesn't have to be anything um, that's related to our specific fields. But since I'm getting into music as well and working on my own original music, that was a huge source of inspiration for me to see from the visuals to they all being connected to a very specific storyline going through all of it and i think that's a great place to start because her storyline is so strong um that was really interesting and very inspiring for me personally uh, a piece of work that i've done um that was very cool i considered it a very cool brand collaboration was um i did a video with bumble a while ago and they asked me to take someone on a date and i thought why not just recreate a date that i've been on personally and i just we just acted out we just show the whole scenario acted out and like showed like a story and actually uh, ranveer alabadia played my humble date on that on that video which is really fun to do we acted together and the impact of that is people keep guessing who that person is till now obviously i will never say because it's such a personal story but for the brand recall it's really fun because all my comments are full with oh is this the bumble guy and till today and that video is what a year old so i keep whenever i meet someone from bumble i make sure to tell them that hey people are still asking about the bumble guy and that's amazing wonderful wonderful it's 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 so gratifying right when you when you hit hit a sweet, sweet spot and it just works and, yeah and then people talk about it i'm i'm sure it must be really giving you a a wonderful high great arthur arthur across apac one campaign that you really think ticked all the boxes oh um well uh, across apac uh, i wouldn't say any of the kols that we have here just to make sure that you know i'm not doing any advertising for any of them but uh, there are a lot of great content that you guys are doing that will tick all those boxes uh, you know it It, it will be hard to say this campaign is ticking all the boxes because it's kind of like have this subjective approach about you know it could be very successful for you and it might be okay or average for someone else. But I think um, you know it's down to I follow a couple of uh, sports people and uh, or you know sports and as I said I, I'm into rock climbing and it was the Olympics not so long ago in Tokyo. Um, and of course it was the first time the olympics and rock climbing was uh, on the olympics so i kind of like follow all the the key medalist uh, or the participant on that and so you, you know their story you, you know you have these emotions and these connections already with the individuals but also about the brands that they work with and then uh, of course what they achieved during the during the event um and, and and one of the one of the guy who uh, did quite well during the olympics and then he was doing a collaboration with some streetwear um you know some clothing um brands and um you know i knew about the brands because i was following them and i knew that they were doing some sustainable uh, activities as well so you know if you buy a couple of shirts then they will plant a tree somewhere so you know there is this connection that resonate with people and i think that's also something that more and more people 
wants to see is just like the contribution of those brands to the society, to the community, and of course, to the cause marketing. I think it might be a topic for another call or another chat, but, you know, cause marketing resonates a lot. Um, and then he was promoting one of the t-shirts and the way he was moving and the way he was using it, I, I had that connection I, and I bought it straight away. And when I received it, my wife was like, you have so many t-shirts, why did you buy this one on top of it? And I was kind of like, I felt connected when I saw the, the, the content and I felt connected. I needed to buy, I needed to contribute. Uh, so you see, it wasn't a great campaign for my wife because she wouldn't understand my perception. But for me, it was, they connected all the things because it was someone you feel related. There was the passion and there is also this cause marketing uh, on top of the creativity about how to talk about a, a t-shirt, for example. So for me, that will be, that will be the one that um, I would say, or one of the latest ones. Super. Super. Sanjay, yours? Yeah, uh, you know, actually, you know, I need to do some justice to the agency head that I wear to give a little bit of a strategic approach to a campaign and, you know, what, what goes behind it. So, I mean, before I come to the campaign that I want to talk to you, uh, I think one part, uh, how does influencer marketing compare with more traditional marketing stuff, right? So for, a, for the marketers who might be listening here, I think one interesting way to understand this is that traditionally when we would be doing marketing and, you know, let's say do a big bank campaign, you do a big television or print or, you know, those kind of campaign, you reach a very wide funnel, you know, let's say you're doing a launch of a new car. So, you know, hit the maximum people and then slowly the funnel bears down from, you know, those who are interested, you know, some of them call the dealership, some of them walk into take a test drive. Finally, there are those who start conversing with, you know, and pricing and everything else, and then some buy, right? So it's like a proper top to bottom funnel. When we do influencer marketing, actually, we do the reverse funnel, right? We start with the fewest number of people, it just so happen that they are the influencers, and you start from a small batch, and then it's kind of keeps spreading out because of their reach and their, their engagement. So it's an, it, and you know, in the spends also, you know, you, you do spray and pray on the top, top side of the funnel, put a lot of money, and then you keep still spending money to keep driving them down the funnel, including at the last uh, you know, bottom funnel where you want to convince them to buy. Here it's a reverse. You start with few people compared to television, et cetera, perhaps spend a less, lot lesser, but then have the impact. And it will reach the, the, the people who are the most likely buyers because it won't, in, in the first case, there's a lot of waste and a lot of spread. Here it's going to only go up to the interested buyers and you know finally you end up achieving more or less similar goals that uh, you know that you achieve with television probably better and definitely more efficient so in that context we had this interesting and this is an old really old campaign uh, or one of our early influencer work but i still am fascinated by uh, you know by that and so i want to talk about it so this was for uh, uh, actually tourism victoria which was to promote melbourne as a travel destination for indians to go and again, I mean, you know, like I said, I need to give a little strategic build up. So when somebody is looking for travel destinations, you know, there is a chance of first doing your own short list based on whatever other inputs you've got. And then supposing you zero down on a location, then you'll start figuring what, what else is there to see in that location. So, okay, I'm going to Europe. So then I'll maybe I'll figure, okay, which countries and what destinations, et cetera. And in that kind of short listing, uh, Melbourne often was not even getting into that consideration set because there's such so much in the world to go from India. So uh, on the other hand, Melbourne has some fabulous places to visit and see. Now, how does one get people to experience Melbourne even when you know even when they are not you know shortlisting content? And so you bring it into the consideration set. Now, for doing so, we we actually had a good start. I mean, with the client, we uh, got. Uh, couple of Indian stand-ups. In fact, Tanmay, who was just mentioned before, Tanmay and Rohan, uh, much before they were as pricey as they are today. So we, we got lucky, we got them early days. And they spent about 10 days in Melbourne or so and went to all the interesting places and created video content there and in their own funny style, uh, including, you know, talking to a Michelin five chef or going to the Melbourne cricket ground and doing a you know, searching, searching, you know, on an empty ground, you know, those kinds of things. And in their own style and those videos, those are funny videos, those got to get seen because of the fun and the humor in it. And as a consequence, Melbourne got discovered. 
and the end goal i mean you know like like i said you know finally we are agency so we need to see what happened so we drove up the traffic to the melbourne uh, website by about 3x on an average uh, when the campaign was running for about 6 weeks and then it settled down at 2x so you know you literally it's 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 got sustainable benefit it's not just that the benefit is happening during the period when the campaign is on if it was x it in the peak it went to 3x and then settled down at 2x so which was really amazing from from the brand's point of view that remains one of my favorites in spite of so many years having gone by yeah no i i completely get what you're saying because even you know as 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 a consumer when i'm planning a holiday somewhere i'm i'm looking for for video content and sometimes i'm looking at really old created video content so the shelf life is not just when it is created but it, it lasts for a extremely long time dhruv you are the last question your favorite campaign oh god <clears throat> what a privilege to be living in a world where there's stuff like what gets created every every little half an hour by creators but i'll be honest my my favorite campaign of all time actually uh, dates back to almost a decade ago it was for me the the first confluence of sort of branded content means influencer marketing um uh, there's a company in the us uh, i think they're present globally as well it's called chipotle and uh, ca marketing ca is one of the world leaders in sort of entertainment pop culture management uh, they came up with a comp- uh, campaign uh, which still sort of gives me goosebumps called back to the start um, and they had a simple the brand had a simple one one line problem right which was that uh, they were a fast food company and they were not their biggest usp was that they were uh they were going straight to the source to to get ingredients they were they were the original farm to farm to table uh fast food company but nobody gave them the respect or the acknowledgement for being that kind of company they were doing advertising they were doing traditional storytelling but it just wasn't working um and i mean i'm super simplifying it but they did an incredible campaign where they actually created a um sort of an animated plus offline game where every time you bought a chipotle product you'd get a piece of this game you bought five or six products in a row you could put it together and the game would actually help you navigate the journey of a farmer um and his entire journey of how he was sourcing the products to how they were actually coming onto your table and if you did the game end to end you got further um sort of benefits with the product you'd get more discounts and so on that was great and that happened and it created some buzz but what was really exciting is they got uh, for those that understand they got um Willie Nelson who's the ultimate country singer of the US he's the hardcore godfather of country music he got Willie Nelson to do a cover of of Coldplay's Take It Back to the Start and uh that song actually went to number 1 on iTunes it was a revelation it was part of their brand campaign and then Coldplay actually went live with them in that Grammys uh, with the entire Chipotle campaign running in the background as a as a campaign that went live and it was i mean it it was so incredible the, num- the 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 number of comments the number of engagements and i'm talking 10 years ago so this was well before social media etc was where it was at right um and it was uh, an incredible of course it was at a certain scale and what i haven't mentioned is that in parallel to this entire activity they ran um six parallel food appreciation and sort of food festivals where on- the only people who could showcase the food were local farmers so you could walk into that particular city and you would have local farmers coming and actually showcasing their 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 produce and showcasing their home cooked meals uh, just to celebrate the fact that uh, you know the real best food in the country comes from straight farm to table right and it just changed chipotle's entire narrative uh, in the country and they continue to ride on that wave as a slightly separated food brand in the us right um, that sparked for me this was 10 years ago it just sparked for me is the early stages of what we are in the in the privilege of being in right now right brilliant storytelling non traditional advertising disruptive ways of getting to consumer um, and allowing people to do what they do best which is which is you know people like to hear stories they don't like to be advertised to and i think if you if you get that right then you know you're you're going to do well so yeah superb thanks a lot dhruv and 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 thank you thank you everyone um for a, for a wonderful chat i had a lot of fun and uh, you know i i i i can imagine how exciting it is to be part of something which is growing which is growing so fast and and being part of a journey seeing something develop into uh, uh, an industry within uh, you know across the world thank you so much um, really happy to have uh, spoken to all of you and i wish you all the best thank and you. have a wonderful thank friday you. evening thank you thank you, thank you.
Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Sai. Cheers, cheers. Just before you log out, I'm, I'm apology, uh, apologies on that. There's a, uh, there's a young fan of yours, uh, Pratna Bhatra, who runs her own uh, YouTube channel, and uh, she's an influencer, author, as I may say. How are you, Pratna? How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, so my, my question is for Sejal, because I've been watching you for like five years now. So... I just wanted to ask you if you if a movie was to be made on your name, what did you what do you think the name would like the title of the movie would be? Just random question, but I'd just like to know. Firstly, hi, it's so nice to meet you. Same, um, I'm so excited. When Harry met Sejal, <laughs> you made <it> already. <laughs> so, oh, but then you need a Harry for that. There are many Harrys I can choose from. Many. <laughs> Good. Great. Yeah. And also, just one last question. I mean, if uh, you could choose one artist, dead or alive, to have dinner with and like ask questions, who would it be? Oh, me? Yeah. Um, Billie Eilish. Oh, good yeah. answer. Yeah. I would also like to be invited to that dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come along. <laughs> come along. And yeah, those are the only questions I wanted to ask because I know we're running out of time, but thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for those really cool questions. Really nice to And I would you. love to interview you for my own YouTube channel. So. I love that. These are the skills I wish I had. <laughs> but great. Really nice to meet you and best of luck with your career. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pratna, for joining. And, you know, this is what we love. You know, the youngsters come and they make it more cool. And, you know, they ask the questions what the, you know, the, it'll appeal to the youngsters. So firstly, thank you all uh, to all our influencers and content creators and all our brand influencers, because, you know, we've, as I told you, we've all been seeing you on, you know, our mobiles, iPads and laptops. And today, everyone's seeing you in a very different perspective. So thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you, Pratna, for joining us as well. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Pradna. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 B